Hi guys, this is the seventh screencast and this week we are discussing what's called information processing. In acquisition of skill, we're asked to look at different models of information processing, namely Welford's model and Whiting's model. But in order to understand this concept of why these individuals decided to create these models, we need to understand the whole idea around or the concept of information processing itself. So information processing uh, tries to explain how we take in information, interpret that information and make some sort of decision. So for example if we're trying to provide a skill movement it's how your brain interprets what's going on in the environment to then produce the skilled movement and that's why it's linked to acquisition of skill. For example if a ball is thrown towards us, tennis ball, it's how your brain perceives that tennis ball coming towards you and then what it does in terms of making your muscles move in order to catch it or to avoid it or to header it or whatever it needs to do for the skill. And it's very much like a computer based system in the fact that you have an input a process and an output. All right. So an input would be like the keyboard, the computer. Process would be the computer itself, the system working out what to do. And the output would be it would put some words on a screen, or maybe it would send some words to a printer. That's le legitimately the computer-based information processing model. Now, us as humans, we're not computers, obviously, and we do things slightly differently, but the same sort of concept could be said for how we interpret skills. So instead of input, we have what we call a sensory input. So generally, we use our senses to make sense of what's coming in. You then have your brain, or a central mechanism, that is the process. So that is going to make your decisions, interpret the information. And your effector mechanisms, which are also known as your muscles, will give you the output. So once your brain's made a decision, it will tell your muscles to move and they will do something, which is the output. So although that's very basic, it's a good overview of what this entire model of information processing is about. Okay, as they start to expand these models, the stages become a little bit more divulged and what happens is you go from just an input to what we call a stimulus identification. Now in this stage your entire body and brain together have to somehow work out what's happening in the environment. So let's take this, this uh, example of throwing a tennis ball. So somebody has thrown a tennis ball towards you and it is moving towards you. This is the input. Okay. In order to identify what is happening with that tennis ball, we use our eyes and we use our ears and our other senses such as touch possibly, mainly our eyes and our ears, to see the tennis ball so it's coming towards us or maybe to hear some aspect of the tennis ball moving towards us and that information is then sent towards what we call the response selection in which we're going to act on that information and we're going to make some sort of decision as to what to do so in the response selection it sort of relates to your brain sticking with the brain it then decides to do what's called response programming all right so in response selection we're sort of making a choice as to what to do response programming is putting that choice into some sort of action so that bit is responsible response program is responsible to start to code or interpret the information and push it towards your motor system which will end up pushing it towards your muscles. So after we have this brain section, we have the final section, which is the output, where it goes to the effector mechanisms, which is the muscles, and the output eventually might be to catch the ball. Okay. 
Now, as I say, this is a more developed system, but the two systems that are needed for your exams, one of which I'm going to show you now, which is Whiting's model of information processing. Now this goes from a quite a straightforward system that I've just explained to this. And it's this that you need to be able to understand. Alright? Now, I'm just going to run through some things which are quite similar from the concept that we've just discussed. So the input from the display is that's talking about the environment that you were in. Alright? So what do you what is around you in that environment? Could be if you're playing netball, there are teammates running around. It could be the lines on the court. It could be the opponents. It could be the ball. Okay, so that is what is around you. That is within the environment. It moves along to the receptor systems, or otherwise known as the sensory information that we've just discussed. So that receptor system or sensory information is just using our senses to receive information we've seen from the display. So we're using our eyes, our ears, a sense of proprioception, sense of kinesthesis, we know what these words mean, to gather data about what we've just seen. So let's go back to the start. Um, we're using a tennis ball. So a tennis, ball's, tennis ball is being thrown towards us again, like we did the last one. The input from the display would be the tennis ball in the environment. Okay whatever environment it is. The receptor systems judge how fast that ball is moving towards you. Your eyes will see that ball. Your ears may be able to hear the ball at some point. Might be able to make a sound. You may even get a sense of kinesthesis as it's moving past something. It's possible or proprioception if it's coming in behind you. The three big boxes in the middle first of which is the perceptual mechanism right the perceptual mechanism is to do with the interpretation of information and what it does first is it detects what's going on so using the sensory information from the receptor systems it is detecting what's going on what's going on what are my eyes telling me what are my ears telling me what information is coming to me okay what is this ball doing for in this example after which it starts to compare have I seen this before have I seen a tennis ball situation before as it comes towards me so you're comparing something that's stored in the memory and then the last part of that system it recognizes so if it has compared something it's recognized something to that comparison. So for example, if you threw a ball at me every day last week, eventually my brain will store that image. And in the perceptual mechanism, when I see a tennis ball, my brain will detect it. It will then compare it to the one you threw last week or the last time I saw it. And it will recognize that and then know what to do, either to avoid it or to go ahead and catch it. In the translatory mechanism, what happens here is your brain starts to translate the information from the perceptual mechanism, so we've recognized something, what is going to be done about it. So it translates that information and moves it along to the effector mechanism, which is where it sends, starts to create a program or a motor program. So you can push it towards the nervous system. All right? So perceptual is about detection, comparison, recognition. Translating mechanism is translating the perceptual information into, into a simpler information so we can understand it. The effector mechanism is then pushing all of that information into a, into a program or an idea that can be sent towards your muscles. So it's capturing that information. After the effector mechanisms, you'll see the muscular system. So that effector mechanism's motor program will be pushed to the muscular system. 
and the muscular system when it gets that information it will start to provide some sort of movement depending on what you've decided to do so if we're going back a bit input date from the display that's a tennis ball that's that's coming towards you in an environment the receptor systems your eyes your ears proprioception kinesthesis what is your sense is telling you about that tennis ball moving towards you how fast is it moving how slow is it moving perceptual mechanisms have I seen this tennis ball before I've detected the tennis ball coming towards me can I recognize what to do recognize the situation before translatory mechanisms okay I've now decided to catch the ball and my brain is going to translate that into a program in the effect mechanisms I have written the program and I'm going to tell my muscles to catch the ball so that's my program in the effect mechanisms the muscular system section now puts that data of catching a ball into operation so it sends it to my to the muscles of my hands and tells them to get ready to move the output data which is the bit on the end is the actual catch okay so that's the moment where I catch it or I miss it and then right at the very bottom we have feedback data so once you caught it you've got a new sense of kinesthesis because you've caught the ball new feeling in your muscle groups plus you've got information did I catch it correctly did I do uh, one of those Australian crocodile catches or did I catch it the English way or did I catch it one handed or did I try to catch it and did I miss it it was too slow so that feedback data then goes right back to the brain in the central mechanisms and tells the brain that you either caught it or missed it you were too slow too fast etc and that's then used in the perceptual mechanisms again when you detect, compare, recognize and your brain adjusts for the next time you have to catch a ball. Okay, it is complex, it's not easy, but you will have to identify these individual sections for your exam. So it's worthwhile going over this again and again and again to make sure you get it. Bring any questions and any notes to the lesson and we will try and work through this together.